Is there some booze there? <laughs> Being heckled from the start, that's not very kind. Um, I do a lot of work in the National Health Service here in the United Kingdom, and I support staff uh, with their mental and emotional resilience. One way I do this is to try and help them think about the ideas of rudeness and respect differently. And this is something that we can all apply to our own lives on a daily basis. And to highlight this, I often use an example. If anyone drives a car, they'll easily be able to relate to this. If, if you don't drive, don't worry. There's another example shortly. But for those of us who do drive, I want you to imagine you're sat in your car behind the wheel and you reach some traffic and there's a car that's waiting to join, like a junction or an intersection. So you decide to be kind. You're going to let that driver pull out. Now, for anybody who associates or identifies with being culturally British, like I do, we have an expectation of that driver. <laughs> yeah, you know where I'm going with this. They really, really should do something. They should give us a little wave. Now, does anybody else feel slightly outraged if you don't get your way? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> And that's it, no one else is getting out on my rest of my journey to work. Oh, oh, not a chance. And we can all relate to this. Well, well I say we all can. Um, some of us are probably more mature than me, and they, they cope with that. Um, but this is a curious concept, because what do we know about the person driving that car? Well, we know they're rude. <laughs> or we believe they are rude. But actually, we know nothing about the person driving that car. Rudeness can be defined by two things. In order to be rude, the first thing I must do is fail to meet one of your expectations about behavior or etiquette. And the second thing I must then do is have no reasonable excuse for my failure. And you can start to see now, this becomes quite interesting because... We all have our own expectations and our own perceptions of what normal is. I have a friend called Raj. He's a doctor. And Raj is from India. And he's been in the United Kingdom for about 10 years now. And Raj said, Rich, when I came over here, for the first two years when I was driving, I thought you all knew each other. <laughs> he said, everywhere you go, they're, they're waving. The Englishman is always waving at you. He said, I, I didn't know what was happening. I just smiled way back. <laughs> he said, I hoped I was getting it right. And he said, it wasn't until two years, two years later, somebody said, no, Raj, that means thank you. And he said, oh, that means thank you. I had no idea. Away from where I'm from means hello. He said, in Delhi, where I'm from, I just mostly swear at drivers when I'm driving <laughs> and smash the horn. He said, the etiquette is somewhat different. And this is the difficulty with the idea of rudeness, because the moment I see the person that doesn't thank me as rude is the moment I deny them the right to be different. The second part of rudeness then, well, what if somebody is culturally the same? What if somebody is essentially the same as me, same upbringing, background, beliefs? Well, they still might not say thank you. Now, here's an example from a few years ago. I was talking to a man in the course of my work, and he was explaining how once he was walking out of a hospital and a member of staff held a door for him, and he walked through the door, and as he walked through the door, he didn't say thank you, and he said, Rich, normally I, I would say thank you in that situation, but that day I didn't, and as he went through the door, the staff member made just a little remark, oh, you're welcome, <laughs> just that passive-aggressive thing we're tempted to do to highlight the lack of manners. And the man said, the reason I didn't say thank you on that day was because I was looking at my cell phone, my mobile phone. And he said, the reason I was looking at my mobile phone was because I needed to get a good signal. And the reason I needed to get a good signal was because I had to make a call. I had to make a call to my sister. And he said, the reason I had to make a call to my sister was to tell her that mum was dead. His mum had died. 
Now, in that situation, had the person holding that door realized that the man's mother had just died, would they have ever seen somebody that was rude? No. They would have seen someone who was distressed, distraught, bereaved, grieving, in shock, but they would have never seen somebody that was rude. Rudeness is a choice. And I call this behavior unconditional negative regard. I assume the worst about somebody at the earliest available opportunity. So what do we do about this then? How do we rectify this? What's the antidote or the cure? Well, there's three things we can do. The first is to remember that our views, beliefs, and perceptions of the world are subjective. They belong to us. What's normal for me and what's normal for my friend Raj, they're different. I'm not better than Raj. He's not better than me. We are simply different. And remembering that difference is the first cure to seeing rudeness. The second thing is to learn to be comfortable with not knowing. Embrace the ignorance. I don't know why the person that I just allowed to walk through that door didn't thank me. But I don't need to know either. I can simply say, eh, I don't understand. And then I can learn to be comfortable with that and move on. And the final thing to consider is this. We need to take pride in what we put in, not what we take out. Is it a kind thing to do to hold a door for somebody? Unquestionably, it is. So why do we do these kind deeds and turn them into anger? Why do we torture ourselves like this? Because the moment we start to associate our kind deeds with anger, well, the logical conclusion is to stop being kind. So the next time you hold that door for someone, hold it because it's the right thing to do, not because you want recognition. The next time you let that car pull out in traffic, do it because it's kind. You can practice this on the way home. In fact, there's a break coming up shortly, so you can just walk through doors and ignore each other, see what happens. <laughs> if there's any conflict, I'll be in the foyer with some, <laughs> with some business cards. <laughs> so. But there's a strange paradox here. Is the moment we abandon the ideas of rudeness and respect, and we just start to behave kindly because it's the right thing to do, well, that's the moment the world becomes a much kinder and more compassionate place to live. Thank you.